Hello guys, welcome to the Karachi United football show. Uh, today we'll be discussing a different topic completely. We're going to be talking about tactics, football tactics, football strategies, football systems. And um, the first match that we will be analyzing is um, Tottenham versus Liverpool's Champions League final last year. And specifically, Tottenham's strategies that they used to break down Liverpool. Yes, we know that they were unsuccessful in doing so, but we found that there were a lot of interesting tactical ideas that Tottenham used um, that we would like to analyze and share with our viewers. Hello, Sheikh. Hello, how are you? Well, all right. So let's dive right into it. I'm just going to share the screen. Okay. 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 So, guys, uh, as you can see right here, we have Tottenham's first half formation. They played essentially a 2 4 2 2 while they were in possession. Okay. They had two centre backs, Alderweireld, Bertongen, two very high uh, full backs, and Trippier and Rose, and two sitting midfielders, Winks and Sissoko. Winks and Sissoko, and Deli Ali and Eriksson were the two attacking midfielders with Son and Kane as two forward players. As you guys can see, it wasn't a conventional uh, forward two strikers because Son was positioned wide on the left side. We have Eriksson and Ali who were positioned ahead of Winks and Sissoko trying to get in between the lines of Liverpool. And we saw this common theme of this square or this rectangle in the middle of the park. Sheikh, would you like to add anything here? Um, no, the, the only thing that I would like to add is uh, for our viewers, that whenever we switch on the TV and the pre-game lineups come in, we see a formation 4-3-3 or 4-4-2. But the interesting thing or the thing to note about is the formations are broken down into in possession, out of possession, and in different certain phases. So this is a very unconventional formation, as you've mentioned. So it's important for anyone analyzing or for anyone looking, it's important to see what is their shape like when they have possession. Absolutely. And I think the formation that is shown on this on the screen at the start of a game uh, is a bit deceiving in a way because as you mentioned, it is constantly changing. It is very fluid and depending on which area of the pitch the team is, the formation may change, right? So, again, like to reiterate, this is when they have possession of the ball and this is specific to the first half. In the second half, it was different and when they don't have possession of the ball, the formation is completely different, right? Okay, so let's move along to their first offensive strategy or tactic that they used um, in the build-up phase, okay? So, here we see the player on the ball is Trippier. He has the ball at his feet. And the, this, this was a cue for Ericsson to make a movement towards Trippier to help him and support him and maybe receive the pass from Trippier, right? We noticed though in the game that Robertson was touch tight to Ericsson over here. He was touch tight, he was sprinting at him, trying to get to him, right? Now, this basically gave Trippier two options, right? He could either play the ball into Ericsson's feet but that was dependent upon how close Robertson is to Ericsson, right? So if he was far away from him, yes, yeah, sure, Trippier can pass the ball into Ericsson's feet. He can turn and he can try to progress the ball up the pitch, right? Sheikh, if Robertson was too close to Ericsson, to Ericsson right here, what else could Trippier do? Um, so, yeah, uh, there could be two things like, one is mentioned to play in to play behind Robertson, which plays there's behind. So what Ericsson can do if he sees him touch tight, he can make a double movement and try to get a ball in behind Robertson. That is one option. Mm -hmm. But if he cannot he is unable to do it, the other thing comes into play where Trippier can play directly to Harry Kane who is just in behind. And he's not sure. in the picture, but Trippi can try to find Harry Kane in behind. 
Absolutely. So he can play, Trippier can play a pass into this space over here that Robertson has left. Or Trippier can play a ball over the top into Kane, which we'll show in the next image, and, and try to progress the ball up the field this way. So if we move ahead. So guys, you see, this is the next phase of the image where Trippier has played the ball into Kane. Kane is looking to shield the ball and protect the ball, right? And as soon as that ball is played, Ericsson has sprinted quickly to get under Kane, to get under Kane, to support him, to receive a set, to receive a layoff. And now Ericsson has multiple options as he's facing the play forward. He can play, he can play Ali, he can play Son, who's not in the picture, but he's wide left. Or many times we saw that Ericsson switched the play to the other side, to Danny Rose or to Winks over here. To Winks, who can, who can then play on to Danny Rose or Son. Absolutely, absolutely. So this was, guys, this was one tactic or strategy that we noticed where, you know, it was very much linked towards Ericsson's movement and the combination between Trippier, Ericsson and Kane. These three players often combined and had synchronized movements so that they can move the ball up the pitch in a very systematic way. Okay, so let's, Shik, let's move on to now the second uh, tactic that we noticed. Um, this was specific to the centre-back Alderweireld's position. So, yeah, when we, when we talk about Alderweireld's position and, and in a conventional way, when a team has possession, a coach or any football manager would like his centre-backs to split wide, split wide and deep so that they're in more space. But in this image or in this picture right now, you can see Alderweireld coming closer to his center back partner. The reason for doing it was obviously, if you look, notice at the bottom of the picture, you can see Trippier in ample lot of space. So what it does right now over here is Mane, who circled in this image, has two options. Does he get close to uh, Alderweireld or does he stick with Trippier's position? And then Tottenham can directly play to Trippier. And if Mane is with Trippier, they can play to Alderweireld, who can then will be in more space and time. So in this current image, Liverpool are extremely compact and they're on one side. So what Sun is doing over here, Sun has actually stretched Liverpool's defensive line to the left side, which eventually or essentially these strip here high and wide on the right hand side. So, Kareem, uh, my question to you is Liverpool's midfield is very compact. Why aren't they looking to block out Trippier in this image? That's a good question, oh, Sheikh. I think that, uh, you know, usually we see teams when they're defending, they don't want to be uh, penetrated through central areas, right? They would rather take the risk and allow a team to go around them or play wider and not allow any balls into Kane, into Ericsson, into, you know, I think this is, um, this is Delhi Ali right over here. So I think that's why they've held this compact shape. And if you notice here, Wijnaldum, he's, he's, he's serving as a screen to prevent any pass into the forward players of Tottenham. Right, and to your point that you were discussing uh, earlier, is that I think uh, Tottenham have picked up these positions in terms of Alderweireld and so on to shift the entire Liverpool team to one side of the pitch. They have forced them to be even more compact and to force them to be, you know, leaving this side of the field, the right hand side of the field, completely open and free. Right, and uh, Sheikh, a, a, a theme we saw most of the time was that it got played to Alderweireld and he then was encouraged to quickly use his range of passing to play Trippier, who can then advance with the yeah. ball and, and move over forward. Mane, over Mane to Trippier. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, okay, let's move on to the essentially, next. Essentially, in this picture even, Mane is also 
in a way trying to block out the passing line to Sissoko as well. He's in a way he's he's feeling that so exactly. nothing nothing can be played centrally. They cannot penetrate centrally. So, so and that was the idea to use Kapil on the right hand side in a wide picture so that he can receive it and then they can move quickly forward. Absolutely. Now let's move on to the next image. In the next image, uh, we are going to discuss Sissoko's position. Now, if you remember from the first picture we showed you, Sissoko is the holding midfielder along with Harry Winks. Right? So Sissoko was usually started off his position in this area over here. If you can see with my mouse or my marker, he was usually started over here. When Alderweireld had the ball, right, Sissoko would draw in draw himself or move into this pocket over here this pocket of space over here right now the million dollar question is why right and uh, what we analyzed and noticed was that it was to give money uh, a, a sort of a headache right because money is now thinking should i go to sissoko should i go with Trippier? i've got he's got a decision to make right and based on the decision money makes Tottenham's players can play the pass that they that they should play or that they you know the right pass that they should play in that moment. Um, I think so you were mentioning about um, the double decision that Mane had to make and what influence it has for the team in position. I think it's very important for the, uh, us to know that yes, there are tactics, but all the tactics all they they evolve in a way within the game you have multiple decisions to make and they they are connected to the opposition so like this for this example if Mane gets very close to Sissoko then Trippier would be really free high and wide near the box if Mane stays where he is Sissoko will get the pass and potentially would be able to play a straight pass so it's it's sort of confusing the opposition by making forcefully decide upon two decisions. So I think that's the main objective over here to put money into some sort of trouble. Absolutely. And guys, just to clarify, Trippier is not in the picture right now, but he's stuck to the line and he's high and wide and he's in sort of this right wing position here. And, and Shik, to your point, I think one thing we've noticed a lot in the modern game is that uh, holding midfielders do get into these pockets of space over here uh, or on this side because fullbacks are bombing up, they're high and wide. So there is space for them to take up in these positions here. What it also does is, as we've discussed it, it draws out, it draws out other midfielders and makes them, makes them a bit uncom uncomfortable to vacate their natural defensive area and, 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 and wonder if they should venture out into these pockets of space, you know, on the right side of the center backs or the left side of the center backs. So let's move along now to the next image where, where we notice even, but, uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, go on. I, I have a little question. Go back. Can you go back to the previous image? Uh, you were mentioning in the modern game, the holding midfielders taking up this position. Um, what is the benefit of it? when the team in possession loses the ball on the right hand side on the right hand side yeah absolutely so yeah. so th that's a very good point which i which you know i would yeah good question is that now let's say let's say what is the benefit of sosoku picking up such a position right uh, if the ball is lost right so in the modern game we've noticed full backs bombing up high and wide trying to attack right but the top managers have to keep in mind if the ball is lost, if the ball is lost, if the ball, if there's a transition moment, how can we be in a position to also protect ourselves from conceding a goal or um, or conceding an attack, right? And uh, Shrik, to your to your question, the fact that Sissoko is here, if if the ball is cut out by Mane, if the ball is cut out by Wijnaldum, right? You have a defensive cover in Sissoko who can occupy a right back position and and be close enough be close enough to kind of press mane to press uh, winaldum if need be and and delay the attack 
Yeah. So I think it's very, it's very important to actually when even when you're in possession and Pep Guardiola said a lot of times okay, we want to defend when we have the ball as well. Essentially, that means picking up positions where if we lose the ball, we're not susceptible to the counter attack. We can still manage to press the ball and win it back quickly. I think that's very important in this image, and the reason also one of the reasons why Sissoko was taking up this position. In the next image, we notice Sissoko has his hand up, right, and his hand is up because he is indicating to Alderweireld, his centre back partner, his centre back, to play the ball to Trippier quickly, right. Um, Mane here in this picture has gotten drawn to Sissoko. And Sissoko notices it and says, okay, come on, play Trippier. Guys, look at the amount of space uh, Trippier is in. And he can easily, very easily exploit the space if that pass is played. Shrik, I think one thing to also discuss is that this pass that Alderweireld has to play is not an easy pass. And Tottenham are blessed with centre-backs with very good ball-playing ability and a passing range ability to play these kind of passes as well. Yeah, hello. Uh, I couldn't hear you in the last part. Can you repeat the question? No, I was just saying that, you know, one thing that uh, sometimes uh, people don't realize is that the center backs need to have really, really good passing range and, and control with the football to be able to play, to play such a pass. Because this is a, it's a 30, 35 yard pass that, you know, we used to see only the likes of Paul Scholes and Pirlo play. But now uh, center backs are required to play passes over the top, beyond defenders, very accurately, right into the feet of Trippier or into space. Yeah, yeah it's always the fact that you consider okay, to have centre-backs. Uh, otherwise, any manager or anyone, they wouldn't be doing all these sort of stuff which would require a centre-back to play 40 range of passes if the player doesn't have that quality. So, any tactics are also dependent on the quality of your players as well. The next image, if we move along, is that when Alderweireld has now passed it to Sissoko. And Sissoko is on the ball. And now Sissoko has options to play straight passes through the gaps of the Liverpool midfield three and get it into players who are between the lines, which is Ali and Eriksson or even uh, Harry Kane. Nan, what are the benefits of playing such a pass through the gaps and you know playing these straight passes? What are the benefits here? I, they do want to penetrate the play forward whenever possible. So if Sissoko plays a pass to Delhi Ali, if I'm not wrong, so they've advanced the play in one pass. Right now, what happens is Delhi Ali has more space and time than any other player because he's in between the defensive line and the midfield line. So what he can do is he can turn and run at the defense. When he does that, the defense have decisions to make. Do they get drawn towards Ali? If they get drawn towards Ali, Harry Kane can make a run. Son can make an out to and run. If they don't get out and try to block him, Son can keep on running and move up the pitch. So the idea is to play the penetrative pass or play the straight pass so that they move up the pitch and the players in between the lines receive the pass so that they have more space and time and ultimately the opposition have decisions to make. Do they get out on him, do they stay, do they jockey, do they hold their position and subsequently. Okay, great, Shrik. Uh, fantastic, guys. Uh, thank you for uh, watching our tactical analysis on uh, Tottenham's uh, attacking strategies against Liverpool. Um, of course, the result showed that, you know, Liverpool defended very, very well and Tottenham were unable to break them down. But these are common themes and strategies that we saw with the Tottenham team of how they tried to break down Liverpool. Yeah, but, but like you mentioned, uh, it, it's credit to Liverpool and the defensive structure actually. How compact they were, they were, they were 
in a lot of ways they were not worried about the going out to Tripoli and they were still centrally blocking out anything central anything central can you and you've mentioned in the first part in in the previous clip the why why teams don't want them to go centrally but uh, if 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 we say uh, just just a little question if mane continuously was drawn towards Trippier, what impact would it have in the dynamics of Liverpool midfield compactness? You, because this is the obvious threat as of now. Trippier is the obvious threat. Oh, he's free, he's high and wide. So, what's your question? That if Mane got drawn to Trippier, how would that affect the Liverpool midfield? Yeah, if yeah, if Mane got drawn to Trippier, and how it would affect it? Well, if Mane got drawn to uh, to Trippier. The the problem they would have was that Sissoko would get way too much time and space constantly as a holding midfielder. Tottenham then could even uh, put Harry Winks into this position instead because he's a better ball player and constantly get on the ball, get have time and space on the ball, one of the best passes of the football in Tottenham's squad, and try to uh, you know you give that player so much time and space he can then thread balls through to Kane, he can thread balls through to Ericsson, he can find Trippier, right? So, I think that's that's the that would be the risk that Liverpool would have if Mane were just to come and stick to Trippier. They would, they would uh, submit too much time, too much space in this area of the pitch. That could hurt them. Okay, Sheikh, thank you for joining us. And guys, thank you for watching uh, our analysis today. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you have any questions or if you'd like us to talk about any specific tactical ideas or matches, please leave it in the comment section. And we would love to um, analyze any match or any tactics that you would like. Thank you. Thank you.